we cannot simply adapt to what is currently the high temperatures because it's only going to get higher. There's no good news here. I can explain what this is attributable to, the sudden change in the summer temperatures in, northern, uh, in the northern hemisphere, is all due to the fact that the Arctic Circle region as a whole is now heating up at nearly four and a half times the rate of the rest of the planet. Our red alerts for heat in Germany, Hungary and Serbia and southern Italy. In Sicily and Sardinia, it could reach 49 degrees Celsius, which would be the hottest ever recorded in Europe. So is this what Europe in the summer is like these days? Do we just have to get used to this? Sir David King is chair of the Climate Crisis Advisory Group, a former chief scientific advisor and then UK special representative for climate change until 2017. In other words, he knows what he's talking about. Sir David, good morning to you. Good morning. Great to have you on. I believe you're in Greece at the moment, in fact. How hot is it where you are? Right. Well, we, we've, uh, Greece is now experiencing the hottest period of a summer they've ever had on record. So, yes, Greece is uh, suffering from heat. Uh, the Acropolis was uh, closed to all visitors uh, over this period uh, because of the fear of heat stress causing deaths. So we, we are once again in a very severe summer in Central Europe. But I, I do want to stress that this is a global phenomenon. Mm. Uh, what we're seeing is Phoenix in uh, uh, the United States, extreme heat waves there, which are really testing the limits of human survival and many, many people dying. Uruguay, Montevideo is running out of drinking water. And then on the other hand, South Korea, 22 dead as the torrential rain and landslides batter the country. So what, what we're seeing, and by the way, the U.S., west side of the of north america is once again going to experience extremely hot weather now what i do want to emphasize is that back in 2003 it was estimated that over 70,000 people died in the heat wave which was the hottest europe had ever experienced on record today the average summer temperature in europe in, in central europe is uh, far higher than that heat wave of 2003. So when we have an extreme hot summer, as we're once again experiencing now, it's on top of this rising average. So what I do want to emphasize, we cannot simply adapt to what is currently the high temperatures because it's only going to get higher. There's no good news here. I can explain what this is attributable to, the sudden change in the summer temperatures in, northern, uh, in the northern hemisphere, is all due to the fact that the Arctic Circle region as a whole is now heating up at nearly four and a half times the rate of the rest of the planet. And that's simply because the ice around the North Pole has been melting far more rapidly than the climate scientists predicted. And, and the Blue Arctic Sea is now exposed to that summer sun. And so the winter ice that grows over the Arctic Sea melts within two or three days of the summer sun arriving. And then for three months of the summer sun, we've got a very hot temperature above the North Pole region. And that hot temperature is driving the shift in the jet stream, which is a, a, a very strong wind that blows in an uh, anti-clockwise direction around the North Pole, around the Arctic Circle region, keeping normally the cold air in and the warm air out. That has become very seriously distorted now. And so in Europe, we're experiencing hot weather coming up from Africa. We're experiencing hot weather coming up from the tropics. Uh, and th that is then counteracted by cold weather being driven down by the hot weather over the North Pole. Mm. So the, the weather systems of the world are in transition. And we must do much more than adapt. It is high time that the governments of the world recognized that this is the most severe crisis our civilization has ever had to face up to. We need joint action from all the leading countries of the world to decide on all of the actions needed. Yes, we must get to zero emissions as quickly as possible, but we must do more than that. We have to see if we can learn to recool the Arctic Circle region. 
and we have to see if we can remove the excess greenhouse gases we've already put up there. Mm. So we've got a big job ahead of us, um, and we need, once again, leadership from the British government. I'm very sad to be able to say to you that I worked for Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, uh, I worked for uh, all the way through to Theresa May, and all of those governments were committed to real action on climate change as global leaders. And that seems to have evaporated. So, you know, Zach Goldsmith's resignation was a resignation in anger because he felt that the government was abandoning all policies related to climate change. Yeah. It's uh, the, uh, all such helpful and informative points. It's interesting what you say about taking more action than simply just adapting. Um, it's one of these things, I, if I was thinking about this this morning, you know, even as we discuss these situations becoming more constant, more prevalent, more obvious, there's a real risk that we do simply adapt and they stop becoming so shocking as these sorts of prolonged heat waves and things that we're talking about now. That's a real risk, isn't it, that we simply become oblivious to this uh, and we just get used to it, in inverted commas. Yes, and, and it, I don't know if you know the, the boiling frog analogy. Yeah. Uh, you, you throw a boiling frog into a pot of water and you start boiling it, and eventually the frog dies. It doesn't jump out in time. And that is exactly what we're doing. If you chuck the frog into the water when it was hot enough to kill it, it would leap out immediately. Mm. So you know, we are very much in, in that uh, risk situation. The humanity needs leadership at this point, and real leadership. We've got to see China, the United States, the European Union, the United Kingdom, and all the leading countries getting together and forming a climate crisis council so that we can actually deal with the challenge. And I, there's no reason why we couldn't deal with it, no scientific or technological region, reason. We need to get on with it. Do you feel like in countries that are more acutely affected, perhaps, for example, Greece, others that you've mentioned as well, that minds are more focused than perhaps in the UK, where maybe we can be almost frivolous about it and embrace a hotter summer. It's something we love. We'll enjoy the sunshine. And actually that then takes our attention away from the potential uh, risk for disaster. We all know about the risk that small island states face, which is their, their existence being right, run out as sea levels rise. We are also a small island state. And so our biggest challenge is sea level rise. And as the Arctic Circle region heats up, Greenland is now losing its ice irreversibly. And what does that mean? Eventually, when all of Greenland ice has melted, global sea levels will have risen by 24 feet. Mm. 24 feet. London is way underwater, well below that sort of level of sea level rise. So there's no reason at all for complacency in the UK or anywhere else in the world. You know, we, we, we have a global challenge and we need to pull together and manage this challenge. We need to forget our differences. Having, having a war, Russia, Ukraine, etc., in this situation is simply bizarre. This is humanity putting its head in the sand. 